Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're really zoning in on uh, the cutting edge of AI infrastructure, specifically Huawei's Cloud Matrix 384. Right. It's making some waves. Exactly. And you're here to get smart, fast on the tech that matters. And well, that's basically our mission today. We've got a pretty detailed breakdown from Semi Analysis. We're really solid source for this kind of technical detail. Definitely. So we're going to pull out the key technical facts compare Huawei's system directly to, you know, NVIDIA's GB200 and VL72. And see what makes it tick, what's unique about the engineering. Precisely. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty significant development for the whole high-performance computing scene. The semi-analysis report, it really lays out the Cloud Matrix 384 clearly. Okay. It's powered by this, this huge array, 384SN 91010C chips, and they're connected in an all-to-all -all topology. All-to-all. -all. That sounds complex. It is. And this whole architecture, it's basically designed to go head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's GB200 and DL72. Right, the main competitor. Exactly. And interestingly, the report suggests that, well, on some system-level metrics, Huawei's design actually shows some uh, pretty intriguing advancements. Okay, let's dig into that comparison then. 384 chips all interconnected. What does that actually mean in terms of performance numbers versus NVIDIA? Well, the sheer scale translates to some, frankly, impressive figures. The report mentions 300 PFLOPs of dense BF16 compute. 300 PFLOPs, and BF16, that's the format for AI training, right? Lower precision, faster compute. Precisely. PFLOPs being the measure of speed. Mm -hmm. And that 300 figure, it's almost double the compute capability of the GB200 and VL72. Wow, nearly double. Yeah, and it doesn't stop there. The Cloud Matrix 384 also boasts, get this, 3.6 times the aggregate memory capacity. 3.6 times. And 2.1 times the memory bandwidth compared to NVIDIA's system. So the report's conclusion is, well, pretty blunt. Based on these numbers, China seems to have AI system capabilities that can, in some ways, outperform NVIDIA's current top tier. Okay, double the compute, significantly more memory and bandwidth. Those are, as you said, headline-grabbing numbers. But there's always a trade-off, right? The report talks about power consumption, too. How does that stack up? Ah, yes. The power figures definitely tell a different side of the story. The Cloud Matrix 384, it consumes about 3.9 times the power of a GB200 NVL72 system. Okay, nearly four times the power. That's substantial. What about efficiency metrics? Yeah, when you break it down by efficiency, the report states it's 2.3 times worse in power per FLOP. Ouch. And 1.8 times worse power per terabyte per second memory bandwidth and 1.1 uh, times worse power per terabyte of HPM capacity, so less efficient across the board. Those are definitely significant differences in power efficiency. Normally, that would be a major hurdle. But the report notes something specific about China's situation, right? Exactly, and this is really key. The report analyzes China's energy context. It points out that unlike many places where power is a big constraint for these massive AI setups. Like data center planning, yeah. Right. China has invested so heavily in diverse energy sources that the report basically describes the higher power draw of the Cloud Matrix 384 as, quote, relevant but not a limiting factor in China. Interesting. So power abundance changes the engineering equation. It seems so. It lets them prioritize raw compute and memory performance, even if it comes at a higher energy cost per unit, because that cost isn't the primary bottleneck for them. So maximizing system performance seems to be the goal, enabled by their energy situation. The report also stresses Huawei's strength isn't just the chip, but the system level. What does that involve? This is a crucial point the report makes. It argues that for modern AI, the whole system, the networking, the optics, the software that manages it all is incredibly important, sometimes even more important than just the chip's microarchitecture itself. So it's the sum of the parts optimized together. Exactly. Huawei seems to have really focused on optimizing these system-level bits to get the Cloud Matrix 384 performing the way it does. It looks like a core part of their strategy. Right, a very integrated design. Now, the elephant in the room often with Chinese tech is manufacturing and the supply chain. What does the report say about where the Ascend 910C and its key parts actually come from? The report dives into this. So while the Ascend 910C is obviously a Chinese design, the manufacturing, well, it still relies heavily on external partners. TSMC is named as the main producer for the wafers using their 7 millimeter process. Still TSMC 7 millimeter, okay. Yeah. And the memory, HBM is 
critical. Absolutely critical. And that high bandwidth memory, the HPM, is mainly sourced from Samsung, according to the report. Mm -hmm. It also mentions Huawei did some significant stockpiling of HPM before stricter controls came in. Stockpiling makes sense. But given current export restrictions on advanced tech, how are they managing to get components like HPM now? The report hinted at some workarounds. It did. It details how China seems to be adapting. Direct shipments of raw HBM chips face restrictions, right? But integrated circuits containing HBM might still be shipped if they fall under certain FLOPS thresholds. Ah, a loophole based on integration level. Kind of. The report points to an indirect route using intermediary companies, naming CoAsia Electronics as an example. The idea is that HBM from Samsung goes to a company like CoAsia, gets packaged perhaps with less advanced logic, dies. Okay. And then shipped to China, where the HBM is presumably extracted or utilized. The report even notes a big jump in CoAsia's revenue correlating with the export controls, suggesting this might be happening at scale. That's quite a workaround. Resourceful, definitely complex. What about building up their own domestic chip making? ESMIC, for instance. The report touches on that too. ESMIC, China's biggest domestic foundry, is definitely making progress on advanced nodes like 7mm. Right. So while TSMC seems to be the main source for the current 910C, ESMIC's improving capability suggests more domestic production could happen down the line. That is, if they maintain access to the necessary manufacturing tech and materials. The report even mentioned some unverified claims about Huawei may be still getting TSMC wafers through back channels. So a mix of reliance on others, clever workarounds, and building domestic capacity. Let's zoom back into the Cloud Matrix 384 system itself. You mentioned the scale the report gives specifics on racks and GPUs. It does. A full system is pretty big, 16 racks in total. 16 racks. 12 of those are compute racks, and each one holds 32 GPUs. Okay, so 12 times 32, that's 384 GPUs, matches the name. Exactly. And the other four racks, they're dedicated just to the scale-up switches needed for that all-to-all -all connectivity we mentioned earlier. Right, connecting all 384 GPUs. And to make that happen, especially across multiple racks, you need serious networking. Huawei relies heavily on optical interconnects. All-to-all -all for that many GPUs definitely sounds like optics would be essential. Why is this emphasis on optics particularly noteworthy, according to the report? Well, connecting hundreds of GPUs like that without creating massive bottlenecks really pushes you away from copper especially over those distances. The report estimates the Cloud Matrix pod uses around 6,912.400G LPO transceivers. LPO is linear pluggable optics, 400G is the speed. Most are for that scale-up network fabric. Almost 7,000 optical transceivers per system. Yeah, it's a massive amount of optics. It represents a huge engineering challenge. The report contrasts this with some earlier NVIDIA attempts at large-scale optics that apparently faced issues with cost, power, and reliability. So the implication is Huawei has perhaps made significant progress in handling the complexity of large-scale optical networks within these systems. That seems to be the suggestion. And the report ties this back to China's industrial strengths. How so? How does it connect? Well, the report argues that this design plays well with China's strong domestic production capability for networking gear and also their development of sophisticated infrastructure software needed to keep such a complex optical network stable and performing well. Okay, leveraging national strengths. Exactly. And again, looping back to the power point, China's relative power abundance helps absorb the higher energy needs of both the chips and this extensive optical layer. Got it. Okay, let's try to boil this down. We've gone through the semi-analysis report on Huawei's Cloud Matrix 384. What are the absolute key takeaways for our listeners tracking this AI hardware race? Okay, summary time. First, the Cloud Matrix 384 is a serious contender in AI infrastructure, directly challenging NVIDIA's high end. Check. Second, it achieves really impressive compute and memory capacity numbers, significantly higher than the GB200 in some key metrics, through a massive system-level yeah, design. The performance is there. Third, this performance comes at the cost of lower power efficiency. Uh-huh. But crucially, this seems to be a less critical constraint within China's specific energy context. Makes sense. Fourth, the supply chain is complex. It still relies heavily on foreign manufacturing, like TSMC for chips and Samsung for HBM, but they're using strategic stockpiling and apparent workarounds for restrictions. Domestic capacity is growing, but isn't fully there yet. Okay, supply chain nuances. And finally, Huawei's system integration capability, especially in large-scale optical networking, seems to be a key differentiator. It leverages China's existing industrial strengths in networking and software alongside that power availability. 
Excellent summary. Some really striking points there, especially the raw performance figures juxtaposed with the supply chain realities and workarounds. So wrapping up for our listeners, the tech savvy folks watching this space closely. Yeah. Here's a thought to chew on. Given these rapid advancements we're seeing from both Huawei and NVIDIA focusing heavily on system level design, what future innovations, maybe in system architecture, maybe in semiconductor manufacturing itself, do you think will ultimately decide who leads an AI compute over the next few years? And how might geopolitics keep twisting this landscape? Something to ponder. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive.